Brilliant. Going well. Um, did Did you ever did you try any of the uh, Turkish delight while you were over there? Yeah, of course. I mean the the good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mum has got a whole stack of it here. We've been, we've been oh boy, here. <laughs> you're gonna come back about ten stone heavier, yeah? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's about my own my own little vice here. I'm yeah, coming back back to the back to my fighting weight. Cool, you will do. You will do. Good yeah. food, good water, good weather. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be amazing. And, and yeah, so lots of right here now. water. Yes, my friend, you know it. Mm. Um, let me quickly say though before we get going, um, how was Vegas? Uh, again, a brilliant one. It was uh um I think somebody asked, I think it was Mark Sargent who asked, um, how many newbies there here? And half the audience stuck their hand up. Wow. Um, there was about it must have been about eight hundred people, between four and eight hundred people. I can't wow. couldn't really tell. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it's half the people stuck their hands up. So even despite all the all the censorship, yeah, right, people are still coming to it. So yeah, yeah. It, was, it was it was great. I was with uh, Mark Devlin on Wednesday two days ago, and oh, yeah. uh, I went to his talk in Litchfield. I met a load of people there, man, loads of people. And believe it or not, I met uh, those three black guys there. And two of the guys, they knew who I was. And one oh. of them was a cousin of my cousin. Can you believe that? <laughs> incredible. Straight up, incredible. So um, I'm, I'm now going to be doing lots of work with them now. Um, I'm going to start doing some talks as of the, in December about fitness and the truth movement. And uh, basically what's, where the fitness industry is going regarding the truth. You know, so... um. I want to start doing start doing them in December and obviously next year as well. So it's going to be really really busy. All good, all very yeah. good. Yeah, man. Yeah, Mark said he enjoyed it as well in Vegas. He said he had a great time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, lots of exciting things going on. I think. Um, well, Mark did say that your your talk. That he said you could hear a pin drop in your talk. He says your talk was his the highlight for him for the whole week for the whole time he was I, there. I I actually thought that. Um, it wasn't getting through to anyone because it was like there was no it like it was like no audience participation whatsoever. I said stuff. You understand, I thought, you know, oh. David. I've seen your talks before, you know, bro. And um, sometimes I think um, you don't realize how deep some of this goes, and people are quite literally gobsmacked by the the, the sheer volume of information because it's it's a, quite a lot for some people to handle, you know. I can handle it because you're with me all the time. You know what I'm saying? So me and you, we talk a lot. So we're all right. But the general, as you call them, muggles, they'll find a lot of the stuff you say way, way, way deeper than they've anticipated. You know, and so um, you got to give them a bit of leeway because I know they're doing this. <laughs> I think they're doing this. They're doing this. Uh, no, I think they're doing this. Nah. 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 <laughs> the depth of... The conversations you have and the talks that you have, you know, it's not for the normal people to handle. You've got to be um, prepared, really. I mean, obviously, they're pre-prepared um, or pre-warned what the subject matter is going to be. But the actual depth that you go to in some of because even me, I know you good. And when I've heard you talk, I'm like, I'm like, whoa, this is heavy. And I've been into this for years, as you know, you know, so you may think they're doing this. But honestly, it's 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 very very deep, and they're just gobsmacked. So Dave, wow. uh, Mark, Mark said your your talk was fantastic. Anyway, he said it was fantastic. So yeah, well done, brilliant. well done, yeah. great feedback. And you, the, by the way, where I was in Litchfield, they want you there as well. I have to tell oh. you that they okay. want you there as well. So I'm going to speak to them. I'm going to a meeting for, with them on Sunday, um, because there's many, many truthers in my area. I couldn't believe it. I was so surprised. Oh really? And, uh, yeah. So um, they know you're away for a bit, but then when you come back, I really feel that you're going to be quite a busy young man with some of your talks. Oh, uh, again. <laughs> when you can fit it all in. You know what I mean? Uh, anyway, um, hey, I... how are you, man? Huh? Mm -hmm. How are you doing? Who? You, Henry, how are you? Me? Hey, I'm always doing okay. As long right. as I wake up in the morning, everything's fantastic. True that. <laughs> all thanks and praise. All praises to the most high. All praises to the most high. Every time. Every time. And everything's, it, everything's good. The is that Dawid over there? Dawid, huh? can you hear us? Huh? Dawid. Dawid. 
Yeah, that way. Hey, hey, shalom, shalom, peace, everybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of doing so much, but I did want to tune in. So, uh, how's everybody doing? Boom. Very well. Very good. Okay. okay very, 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 very good to hear. Good every everybody's in peace and in great health. Um, yeah, we doing good. Um, everything is going good. It's, I'm getting prepared for Sabbath, so uh, I got a lot of round and round to do. So I told uh, you know, I will be on for some time, but I would have to, I would have to jet out in a minute. So cool. yeah, I'm gonna chime in for a little bit, and then uh, I'll probably be on here for about a half hour to an hour at max. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 No problem. Oh, good. Wesley. I just trying to go. Yeah. I saw my, I sent, I sent a new link. So he's, he's seen it. So yeah. I just trying to, I just trying to call him now. Yeah. What's the topic? Did y'all come up with a topic? It's just what's going on, what's going on around us basically now, because a lot of things going on. Oh, okay. So you know what I mean? So about world, world events, what's going on in the world? Yeah, it's been interesting times. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Very That's interesting. That's it. So. Every, How's things going in London? Is uh, what's going on in London and uh, in, in uh, UK right now? Is it a lot of uh, chaos going on? Or uh, yeah, just little bits and bits. You see, like a, a few marches and things like that against uh, Palestine and Israel. You know, either people on one side, people on the other side. You know, it's like that. But I wouldn't say there was any chaos or anything in in England. Yeah. It's like we're in a lull at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Agree. There's agree. um. They've they've tried a few uh, they've tried a few of their um, false flag things. I mean, Israel was one of them, and uh, you know they've been they've been trying things. I mean, they're trying to trying to revamp the uh, the the pandemic and roll that out again, and that's not working. Didn't work um, at all. Yeah, no, so, so no, I don't think there's there's no panic. There's no. It's just a lull at the moment. People are people are waiting for the next big one, but. Uh, or they know that something's coming, but uh, you know, I, I I don't think there is coming actually. To be honest, what about Neither like aren't you dealing with like some internal problems? Like as far as uh, what's going on with the government and stuff like that? I heard it was some, or is that another country? It was some place in Europe where it's a lot of uprisings against the government. Is that is that going on in your area as well, or no? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Uh, not yet, um, not yet. It's gonna. I think it's gonna take a hell of a lot to get the British public to to rise up against the government. Oh, um, in in my circles, the truth be known, um, there are a lot more people now who are awake to what's going on, and they're not um so easily fooled as regards to some of these false flag situations that they're trying to push forward. Um, I do feel now there's a lot more talks going on now. I found out yesterday, and a lot more truth of groups now than ever before. You know, and I think the truth movement now is really, really growing. I mean, <clears throat> I didn't realize myself. I mean, just quite recently, as I said, when I went to a talk on Wednesday, um, there's many talks in and around the Midlands area where I'm from, and it's great. And they all want me to go and speak with them, speak to them and stuff. And uh, they want to hear about what I what I know. Obviously, I know a lot of stuff. Um, some of them don't know as much as myself or Dave, for instance, but they're willing to know more. And so it's going to be very, very interesting in these next coming months um, because uh, people's, uh, people are now very, very, very um, inquisitive on what's going on and where what lies for the future because the future is, is coming real fast. And uh, there's either you're one way or the other, okay? And more people now are trying to find out more and more what other people know about what's coming in the future. No one's happy with the, the government. No one. No one's happy with the government, really. You know, so um, they want to find out, you know, the reasons why certain things have happened and may be happening in the future. And the things that are going to come, how to avoid them, which is great. And um, a lot of the guys are cutting down the cameras now um, off the street, which is great. Blade That's runners. the best thing yeah, ever. Because yeah. there's a lot more surveillance going on now. But... Um, yeah, man, they're amazing. They are so so cool. And I think there's going to be more Blade Runners in and around the UK as well in these next couple of months as well because people are sick and tired of all these cameras and all these fines for driving up roads where there's no other cars. It's ridiculous. And the 20 mile an so, hour yeah, turns. So, yeah, Dawid, um, it's a... It's a what, what, what is that all about? Even, even Wales, I mean, of all the places, Wales, they've gone against 
this 21 and hour thing, which is great because they usually they're very, very usually um compliant to a lot of these things that are put on them by the government, but even Wales now use. So yeah, there's a fight back, a good strong fight back at the moment, and it's gonna get bigger. I really feel it is very optimistic uh, here, but I think it's gonna be bigger. How are things are you on? Sure uh, sorry. Oh yeah, everything is uh cool. Um there's nothing nothing going on here. Um they did have a little scare, uh, but not in my town. Cause you know that the uh, the Yemenis, the Houthis, have uh, started shooting some some uh, rockets and sending drones to try to hit southern Israel. And then one, uh, I think it was about a few weeks ago, one of them landed in the Red Sea. Um, I think it was. I think actually that was shot down by a U.S. carrier, a uh, naval, naval carrier. And then it was another one. Uh, I think about a week later, following that, that hit about an hour where I was, where, where I'm from, uh, where I'm at now, but it was just debris. It wasn't like no actual missile strike. So, you know, that, that that's the only thing. Other than that, it's, everything is quiet here. I'm, I'm far away from all the conflict that's going on. I'm like, I'm in the South side now, so I'm deep in the South. So right. uh, yeah, everything is pretty much going good. There's no panic here. You know, of course you have a lot of, uh, a lot of support for the Palestinians here. Um, but uh, other than that, yeah, everything is pretty is pretty cool. Okay, cool. Are Are you in and amongst the Israelis where you are? No, no, no. I'm in. Uh, no, the side the Sinai was handed over, uh, to the Egyptians. Um, I think about a few decades ago. Um, you know, it was part of a peace agreement. You know, uh, Israelis used to own this area, but it was given to. The Egyptian, you like I said, the broker of peace agreement. So yeah, I'm 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 bunch around I'm I'm around a bunch of Egyptians and Bedouins. Okay. What's the the black community, the dark skinned black community like where you are? Um, it's pretty much non-existent where I'm at. You will see that mostly in the mainland. It's a place called Aswan that's more closer to Sudan. Um, but also the other the, the other Israelites that's in this area. Um. You know the one, the few that's left. Everybody is like I said, we had peace and things like that. I am in contact with a few elders in uh, the land of Israel, so they be keeping me updated on what's going on there. Uh, the Mona, right at the moment, is um, you know they're 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 out of the crossfires. I, I heard allegedly that it was a rocket that was supposed to uh, hit the Mona. You know that the Mona has the nuclear reactor. And um, word is, is that that's where the Palestinians are mostly trying to hit. They're trying to hit that nuclear reactor. Um, so that that's that's pretty scary. And, you know, uh, according to the map that uh, the Mona is southern is the southern inheritance of Yauda, which is which is almost the border to Edom. So, um, you know, it's possible, you know, when they, these people retreat and start going down into the southern Negev, that you know that could be the judgment there when that when one of those rockets hit the nuclear reactor. So, um, but also the brothers that's in um, Ashkelon, which is not too far from the Gaza Strip, uh, that community was evacuated by the Israeli government and it was pushed, I think, pushed towards uh, Beersheba, which is closer in more more inland from the coastline. So, um, as at the moment, there's been no casualties amongst that, but. You know, as I've been talking to the elders, I'm very displeased with that community. Um, and the reason being is because they have integrated with these Israelis and with the uh, general public. And had, they have our people in the midst of that army, you know. And I've been chatting with the elders there that y'all need to do something to get those people out because this is not our fight. And the Israelis are going to lose this war. They're going to lose. Um, they're going to lose. Uh, and it's, I'm not saying that they're going to lose per se to the Palestinians directly, but there's going to be other outside forces that join this war. This is going to escalate and um, the Israelis are going to receive the short end of the stick. So, uh, you know, like I said, I've been, you know, trying to talk with these people and try to get them out, uh, you know, so to do something to get our people away from that army. Um, our community there has a hundred percent enlist rate, which means that all of our children, once they graduate from high school, they are, they go to the army, you know, they do stay. Yeah. They have a hundred percent enlist rate. And that's at the fault of the elders in Demona, you know, because they have, um, actually they offered themselves 
to join. That was the agreement. That was the agreement, wasn't that it? That was the agreement. But the thing is, is that when it wasn't a, it wasn't initially, it wasn't a part of the initial agreement. They no. wanted to, yeah, yes. they wanted, yeah. they wanted to integrate. And when they, they actually asked to join the Israeli army, and the army said no. Okay, and then what they did was they protested for about three days. They had a sit-in for about three days to join the army, and eventually they said yes. But if y'all going to enlist, y'all have to have a 100% enlist rate. So that's what they've been doing. So, yes, um, right now my focus is on, um, you know, dealing with these elders in Demona because they have led our people to the slaughter. You yep. know, um, a few years ago, I forget the sister's name, but it was one of our people who were, uh, they said she committed suicide, but she was murdered. She was murdered amongst the Israeli army. Um, a head shot, you know, a shot to the head with a, 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 sem a sem uh, automatic uh, assault rifle doesn't seem like suicide to me. Um, but yeah, so that, that's what's going on. Like the community at the moment, like I said before, they're not going through any casualties, but they have a lot going on right now as far as our people who are enlisting into the army. But I heard as well, though, that they were trying to deport some of the Israelites um, from Demona. They're, they're on that case again. Is that correct? Yes. Um, though that case, uh, yeah, they eventually, they uh, at the initial start, they told them they had 60 days to leave. But they they were fighting through appeals and all this type of stuff, so it's been prolonged. That it, it's just dragging along. Nobody has, from what I heard, has been deported yet. But you know, I think it's still an ongoing investigation. I think I said, you know, there's, there's appeal after appeal. But um, and it's only a few families. It's not the whole community. So I don't want you know people to think that the entire they're trying to it's you know uh um you know uh kick out all of our people. It's just a few families who they felt that was uh, there illegally, not under the agreement that Ben and me had made with them. So, but as of, as of the moment, okay. nobody has been deported. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. I don't think, um, I don't think the Israelis are going to go south. Um, we already found mm -hmm. out that, uh, I think it's back in 2013, that they were given the automatic right to return to Ukraine, if you believe. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I I mentioned it way back in 2013 that um, that you know Ukraine um, basically acknowledged that the Israelis are actually from there, not from the land, by oh. saying they've got the right to return. Mm -hmm. I don't. Um, well, you got to think about the situation in Ukraine. That too is only going to get worse. Uh, Russia is still pushing for the West. Uh, they already started to, uh, you know, have their quarrels in Kiev. Uh, Ukraine, to me, will be a no-go for these people. Um, for one, these people are proudful. They really believe that this land is theirs. Um, the reason why I say they will push south because of the situation that's going on with Lebanon. And also, remember, the Golan Heights. There's a lot of, there's still a lot of conflict going on in the Golan Heights. Syria is still claiming that territory to be theirs. The Israelis is claiming the territory to be theirs. So they're having a lot of skirmishes on the border, the northern border. And actually, they already started to push south. Um, you have some towns that have been evacuated from the northern border because of the conflict with Hezbollah, and that's going to intensify. You also have bombings in Syria. Um, you have a, a major proxy war going on in Syria. I think you want to keep your eye on Syria as well, because Russia has actually joined this proxy war in Syria. Um, so, uh, you know, you have a lot of conflict going on. And the reason why I say that they will push uh, further south, because that is their land. The land south of the Negev Desert, pushing over into the Petra area, is the land of Esau, you know, and... According to prophecy, from my understanding, from my perspective, is that the Most High said he was going to judge them in their land and not ours. So also it mentions in uh, Jeremiah chapter 49, the 21st verse, that when he talks about the judgment of Edom, that their judgment was going to be heard from where I'm standing now, from the Red Sea. You know, so they have bombings coming from Lebanon. They have bombings coming from Gaza. They have bombings coming from Syria. And now they have bombings coming from Yemen. And like I said, this is only going to intensify. Now you have them actually, the, the you know, of course, so y'all heard that the ground invasion has begun a few weeks ago, and they're now starting to conquer territory. 
And um, I'll get into the reasons for my, my personal reason why I think this is uh, happening, but uh, I'll give anyone the chance to speak if they want to elaborate on what I just said or any, want to have any input. But I'll, I'll give, I'll share my thoughts on why I think this is happening. <laughs> I have no, I have no thoughts on that. This is all news to me. So yeah. okay, okay. So um, well, there's a few things. Are you have you uh, I don't know if you're aware that um, Benjamin Netanyahu has put forth a government coalition that's very far right. Okay, and these are the people who are, truth be told, they're backed by Orthodox Jews, but they're hiding behind the scenes. But they're the ones that's uh, pushing and promulgating this uh, agenda to. Uh, wipe out the Palestinians, remove them from their lands, basically commit another, I think it's Aqaba, which means, you know, uh, disaster. When they did it, I think a few decades ago, they pushed them out and most of them fled to Lebanon and some went over into Jordan. So they're trying to, it's two things, they're trying to eliminate the Palestinians because they want a full-blown Jewish state. They don't, they have no intentions on having a two-state solution. This far-right government is very, very, very pro-Israeli, pro-Zionism, you know? So that's one reason. Also, you might want to ask your question, why is America fully in full support of Israel? Well, according to my, um, according to hearsay and also according to some things that's been going around, um, you know that Egypt is kind of on the fence of whether they're going to support America or whether they're going to join Russia. They already ap uh, applied for joining the BRICS nations, which is aligned with Russia and China. So I don't think that the United States fully trusts Egypt at the moment. Um, so uh, you know that the Suez Canal is the, basically the pathway from Europe over to Eastern Asia. It's the only route that goes, you know, that, that's the quickest way for, without them going all the way around, quote unquote, the continent of Africa. So what they're trying to do, according to, uh, you know, sources, they're trying to build a new, excavate a new canal that's going through Gaza. Yes, yeah. To reach the Red Sea and going on going through the Aquaba side of the Red Sea and not the Suez mm -hmm. side of the uh, Red Sea. Mm -hmm. So um, that's another reason why I think that United States is really pushing for this. They are really they are opposing ceasefires. There's been uh, many votes on a ceasefire, you know, from the UN Council, and United States has rejected all ceasefires. And I think this is because the United States sees that you know this is an opportunity. For them, for them to take advantage of what they're going to call the Ben Gurion Canal. So, you know, yeah. just keep an eye out on that. And to me personally, I think that's never going to happen. I don't think the Most High is going to allow them to excavate and, 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 and crush through that land and, 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 and you know, and um, meet their agenda, meet their objective. So, yeah, that's what I want. That's, that's my thoughts on that. You know, y'all might have different thoughts on why this is happening, but that's my thoughts on why this is going on in that area. Interesting. Now, Very interesting. I, I have to agree that that uh, canal has uh, has a great bearing on what's going on um, yeah. because it's uh, you know financially you know economically um, you. that that that's a huge deal for the for the states. But you know there you go. All right. Hey Lee. Hi, Lee. Peace, <laughs> peace and y'all, bless brothers. Peace, 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 elder. Peace, elder. And yeah, let me just chime on that real quick uh, before Elder Lee chime in. Um, Yes, I really agree. This is definitely over currency. You know, if you know, you, if you go back to the first two world wars, it all started once. Once currency starts to fall, once a superpower's currency starts to devalue, that's when you have these type of conflicts. You know, so um, yes, I do agree with you uh, absolutely, Elder Dave. This is the the main root, the main cause of this conflict, and, and this uh, situation that's going on with this canal trying to be built through Gaza, running through the Negev into the Red Sea has made the majority of that is have to do with uh, finances. That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. Oh, Lee, what's up, man? Peace and y'all bless, brothers. I'm sitting Peace here. I've got one of my grandsons in my hand. They will not let me uh, do this meeting by, by myself. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's, it's, it's a good thing. Uh, I'm certain it's nice to be able to chime in with you, uh, you brothers. Haven't seen you all in quite some time. And there's been quite a... Uh, Quite a stir up with the developments here lately, haven't it? As far as what we've seen pertaining to, uh, I mean, certainly the violence and everything else that goes with it, but uh, it's happened quite suddenly. What do you think? I mean, uh, I'm a bit behind, but uh, you know, what is uh, brother, brother, brother Dawid? What are you seeing? And I mean, you're closer to 
to the uh, to the hot spot than we are. What's uh, how has things changed uh, in your area? Oh yeah, so Indiana. yeah, we'll see. I'm sorry. Go ahead. How has things changed in your area in the Santa? Oh uh, yeah, like I was mentioning before, um, everything is actually quiet here at the moment. Um, you do have some things going on in the North Sinai where, you know, closer to the Rafa border, I forgot to mention this to the other brothers before you chimed in, but the Rafa border, um, also another agenda, like I said before, you know, with them trying to push the Palestinians out, they're trying to push them on Egypt. You know, they're trying to guilt trip Egypt in, in, into accepting the Palestinians and things like that. But um, the only people who have been allowed to use that Rafa crossing has been the ones who have dual citizenship in other countries. You know, some of them are American Palestinians, some of them from Europe and, you know, other places. But uh, also, like I was mentioning before, uh, you had a few things going on about a few weeks ago where, uh, like I mentioned, the Utes, the Houthis from Yemen have joined you know, basically and started shooting uh, rockets and, uh, well, missiles. They have missiles. They're not shooting rockets. They're shooting missiles. They have missiles they're shooting, which one got intercepted by a U.S. carrier over here in the aqua side of the Red Sea. Um, and another one, it was a drone that tried to reach southern Israel, but um, that actually, it didn't make it in it. A little debris in the fall here in the Sinai, but where I'm at, I'm, I'm going to tell the other brothers, I'm far south in the Sinai, away from any conflict, so Everything is uh is peaceful here. I, I can't say I can't say all this as uh being coincidental. Yeah, this is this is signs of the end. You know the, the the end of this story. Um, the um I don't know if you call um President Erdogan of Turkey basically said that uh, Israel is finished. <laughs> you know so and he um, said they have I, to answer to war crimes as well. So the war crimes, very much so, against very much against Israel. Yes, yes. Yeah. Also, yeah, they have lost um, a lot of uh, countries have uh, broken tides uh, with, quote unquote, Israel. Um, I hate calling them that, but, you know, for the sake of political, you know, um, yeah, a lot of them, a lot of South American countries have broken with them. A lot of countries over here, they're still kind of weighing their options. Like in this region, they want to see which, how, how what, what the table is going to, how is it going to flip? Um, you know, places like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, you know, most of those countries there in the Saudi Peninsula, they're right now, they're just sitting back and seeing and just trying to join the winning side. You know, whatever side wins, they're going to hop on. You know, that's why they're not really fully supporting the Palestinians at the moment, because they do have certain agreements like the Abraham Accords, you know, um, and things like that. So, but I think they're just waiting to see how this currency is going to go. I think once the, you know, the more the currency starts to tip more in the BRICS favor, then they're going to support Palestine more, you know, and if it starts to, you know, the United States can somehow, of course, you know, I don't see this happening, but if they somehow are able to rebound this dollar, then they're going to lean more to the West. So, you know, that's, that's kind of like the situation that's going here on here in this uh, area. I see. Well, even, no, even I, I the, find uh, it amazing that both Christianity as well as Islam is coming straight out of Constantinople, which is Turkey. Uh, I think that the uh, the card here, the Trump card here, is Turkey with their military power. Uh, I'm thinking at the end of the day, all these agreements that these Arabs have made with the European nations, I think they're going to break them. Uh, and when we're talking about uh, they're going to break every last one of them. Uh, you know, my my view of this is that all the families of the earth are going to realize exactly who it is that's been going back and forth, up and down throughout the earth, cause, causing all of this mischief. I think the Arabs know good and well that these Europeans that are sitting in the land calling themselves Israelis mean them no good. I think they don't trust them. They don't trust the Israelis, and the Israelis don't trust those Arab nations. I think it's all a front. You've got a bunch of leaders sitting down there lying to each other, doing what may be politically feasible at the time. But at the end of the day, I think the, the Israelis, who are nothing but a bunch of Europeans sitting in that land with the same playbook that we've seen these Europeans do in Australia, America, Central, South, and Latin America, and Africa, is the same play, playbook. He hasn't changed his methods. Uh, and I think everyone is pretty much figuring this out. And all the families of the earth are going to be looking at this man like, oh, yeah, it's you. And so uh, I think the Israelis have gone entirely too far at this point. There's no turning back at this point. 
I don't think there's anything where it is, you know, 10 years down the road, five years down the road, we're going to look back and say, oh, uh, they did this and that. I think they will no longer be. Yeah, I yeah. think that's where we are. Yeah, because uh, I see I see a lot of people waking up now and uh, they seem like they're going against uh, Israeli people. You know, and they're saying, how come we can't say anything against Israel without without getting called anti-Semitic when they're not even Semitic people? Right. Well, <laughs> e e even that game is that game is fading away. They use that as basically a barrier to you know to separate you know the barrier to cover themselves with. You know, what I'm saying the anti-Semitic slogan, but people are no longer going for that. You yeah. have many different, yeah, you have many different. Uh, and even institutions, you know, there, you know, you have a lot of the boycotts of Israeli products all over the earth. You even have in, you know, um, even the media is pushing, not mostly the mainstream Western media. Of course, we already know they're very pro-Israeli, but, you know, the outside outside media, like you mentioned, uh, Erdo Erdogan, uh, I forget his name, the president Erdogan. of Turkey. Yeah. yeah, the president of Turkey, you know, he's, you know. They've cut in ties with them. Like I mentioned before, a lot of South American countries have cut in ties. All the continent of Africa has cut ties, you know. So they have no no allies in, in Africa, and they're losing their allies in the Saudi Peninsula as well, too. So, yeah, it's very it's very very dire times for them. And like Elder elderly said, I believe that this is the time that their time that is coming to an end. Well, I mean, yeah. who who actually trusts the Israelis? I mean. They have just as uh, much, almost as much lack of trust as the Americans. Right? <laughs> you know, to be honest, nobody trusts the Americans. You know, um, not not the people, but the American mm -hmm. government. Right? Nobody trusts the American government. They know it, it's like that story of the, uh, you know, the um, uh, was it the scorpion on the back of the frog or something, uh, and uh, you know, the scorpion says, "Take me across the river," and yeah. and. I don't know. If it, I don't think it's a frog. It's some other animal. It says okay, but I, I don't want to do it because you're going to sting me. He goes, well, I'm not. I, if I sting you, we'll both die. So he takes him on his back, exactly. goes across yeah. the river, and stings him. Yeah. So he says, why? Why did you do that? Why do you sting me? Now we're both going to die. He says, well, I'm a scorpion. What do you expect? Exactly. What I do, man. What I do. Yeah. Great story. You know, but that's that's who we're dealing with. You know, nobody trusts the Israelis and nobody trusts the Americans. Um, so it, it's essentially um, we know at the end of this, they are going to end up fighting each other. 100%. Right? They, always do. they always do. And and again, none of none of this, this alliance, you know, loves each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all they're all actual rivals against each other, but they're all they're all sort of confederate against us. Right. Yeah. Also, to um, did you want to say something? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Elder Delvin. No, no, you carry on. It's all right. Okay. Yeah, you mentioned something about self destruction, and so you know, a lot of questions are being raised. Like, okay, uh, not amongst the public, but you know, people who are in tune, you know, and try to um, follow along with prophecy. But what's going to happen once the Israelis are run out? Once they lose this war? Who's going to take control of the land? Now, I really believe that for a small moment that the Palestinians will have control of it for a, a, of a small time. But I think eventually, when you talk about self-destructing, you have two you have two sets of Muslim fractions that have only joined together for this only for this one cause to fight against Israel. You have the Sunni fraction and you have the Shia fraction. Now, I believe that once Jerusalem is under Palestinian control, that you're going to have these fractions fighting over that piece. And I think they're going to self-destruct. So I think, you know, I don't think that it, the judgment stops once the Israelis lose. I think even these people, these Arabs have a judgment coming to them as well for the part that they played in the East African slave trade when they took the most high people out of the Niger Congo area of Africa and they spread us abroad, sold us to East Asia, sold us to West Asia, you know, places like Saudi Arabia, India, Pakistan, you know, you have a lot of our people that are in those places as well. And these Arabs are um, a main reason for that. So like I said, the judgment doesn't stop once Israel is judged. It's going to be a whole lot more judging going on in this area and also all over the world. Well, as Dave said, you know, their main aim is for us not to unite. They've got to hold us back and keep us away from everything. So they'll end up fighting each other because we're really out of the picture, but they want us out of the picture. 
They don't want us to have a voice, really. And that's their main aim. So eventually they will have conflicts between themselves. That's how they work. And that's how it's going to be. You know, so we shouldn't really get too uh, predisposed with the details. Not really. Um, the punishments are going to come. We know that for a fact. We just have to just sit by and, and watch it happen, really. Because <laughs> you know? both sides don't don't like us anyway. Because you've got the... You got the black Palestinians what getting perse perse persecuted against the Israel Israelis and 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 the Palestinians are per oh, yeah, persecuting absolutely. them. Absolutely. So why would why would you back any of them? In absolutely. my opinion, so they don't they don't like us anyway. Yeah, it's not our business. Leave them to it, man. Leave them to it. Right, yeah. and that's what I would talk about. I think elderly he wasn't known, but um. I mentioned something about, uh, we were talking about the communities that we have there in Israel, you know, of course, Damona, Ms. Pei, Irad, you know, some of them there are in Ashkelon, which have been evacuated from that area because of, you know, the Gaza conflict, pushed them more to Beersheba and more inland towards the, uh, you know, pushed further inland towards the uh, Negev Desert and moving away from the coastlines. But yeah, you know, like I said before, they, you know, uh, we're trying to get our people, well, not trying to, but I've been talking to some of the elders there and, like I said, chatting with them about our people joining that Israeli army. You know, to me, that is the biggest thing going on amongst us right now that has to deal with our nation is that our elders have sold our people and our youngsters out, you know what I mean, just to integrate amongst the, the wicked regime of the Israelis. So um, I'm not expecting anything to get done because I know that we're dealing with a pride for stiff neck people over there in the Mona. But at the same time, it has to be said, they have to do something to get our people out of that army um, because the Israelis are going to lose this war. Um, I just want to little, make a little point here. Um, I, I, as I recall, and I, I'm not very good at chapter and verse and stuff, but before the first exodus, there was a group of, um, there was a group of uh, Israelites who left Israel, um, left Egypt and uh, um, well, they they actually got uh, they virtually got wiped out, and uh, only a couple um, who survived, um, you know, managed to make it back to Egypt um, because the Most High hadn't ordained the time for them to leave. So they left early, and the Most High basically punished them for that. Um, I, again, I can't remember chapter and verse, but I believe that's what happened. Um, so could it be, I mean, I'm just, just saying, could it be that, uh, you know, the, our people uh, have gone back to the land a little too early and uh, um, are, are going to face some kind of punishment for that? Just saying. Um, yeah, anybody want to chime in on that? Brothers, then, brothers, before I mention anything, I, I would like to... Uh, Extend Brother Benai's regards. He said to let you all know our peace and y'all bless. He's uh he's out gathering uh food and things like things like that for the Sabbath to prepare himself for the Sabbath. But he would have liked to have been here, but he's he's occupied at the moment. So he wanted to let you all know and the people that are viewing peace and y'all bless from Brother Benaya. Uh, as far as that goes, uh, they've been in that land for quite some time. Uh, you know their 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 views are a bit different, and and that's okay because I think many of us have different views. And that's fine. I think it's going to be made clear. Uh, we're going to see exactly whose God's who whose God will work. I think it's going to get that bad. As these uh Israelis get ran out, it's going to certainly cause a stir with the Christian conservatives here in America as well as throughout Europe, because they actually feel wholeheartedly, some of them unknowingly, uh, and some of them just actually believe it with their whole heart that these people are God's people. So it's going to be quite a terrifying thing if they see these Israelis run out of this land. Then they wouldn't know which way to go. Also, uh, it's 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 a moment that's going to really be defining for the house of Israel, for our people. We're going to find out if what we have been teaching, espousing, and, and believing, we're going to see if that is indeed true. The Christians are going to see if his God is going to work. And the Muslim, uh, he will, see, I mean, all of this is going, all the watchmen are watching. So we're going to, it's going to be a defining moment, but at the same time, it's going to be a hor horrific moment also, because there's going to be a lot of death involved here. So, I mean, we have to, we have to pay attention. I think the whole world should pay attention because this thing can change suddenly, especially when we know the unrighteousness of these people that call themselves Israelis. 
and they're being backed by the unrighteous, the unrighteous French, uh, the un, and all the European unions, all the UN nations, the unrighteous nations. Uh, so if they're going to back these Israelis and what they're doing, if you're holding hand with an unrighteous man, therefore you're unrighteous as well. And so the punishments is going to fall upon uh, Germany, France, America, and all the other nations that's seeing this blatant violation of the Most High's law and actually turning a blind eye to it. Well, let's see. Let, let's see what will happen because we nobody's hundred percent if that is actually the land anyway. But something something will happen. But we just have to. Time will tell. Well, we do know that this area was well. The uh, Third World War has been planned for for hundreds of years, and uh, you know we can see it's kind of shaping up for that. Um, you know, right now. So, yeah, as as Brother Lee said, it's um, you know, it's it is. Oh, kind of forgot where I was going with that now. <laughs> Brain like a sieve. I'm sorry. Uh, it is it is shaping up, and it I do could, feel it could turn at any second. It could literally turn at any second into the full blown World War World War Three. That's it. Would you uh, like yeah, they see like the Brits? I do feel um, these nations. Like the, like the Brits, a lot of countries are joining the well, Brits. And then you got like the Americans who want to do the digital currency. So it's going to be like, it's like a war against two different currencies who's going to control. But they, either one is no good for any, from from the masses of people anyway, because it's all about control. Either the but, Chinese control or the US control. Also, I, th I think... Um, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think it just it just makes a clear distinction between um, the old system uh, and and a potential new one. That's not to say that BRICS will become, um, you know, the new economic system. I'm just thinking that there's a there's now a clear distinction between the old way and the new way. And since the um, the new way seems to be you know, populated by our people, even though there's China and uh, Russia involved in that. It's just, um, I think the exodus will be because um, the people, um, you know, won't want to be under that new system. You know, the CBDC, is it CBDC? Yeah, CBDC system. Um, and, you know, the idea that we will leave these lands and the stranger will come with us. It will be those people who don't want that system, who don't want to live under that oppression, who will come with us to a, a, a different way. Um, and that's that way, I don't believe, involves money. Well, I, that's also, what I said. Yeah, the, sorry, what the system right now, okay, all the systems are the same. They all want control, okay? And the people underneath each system, they'll have to make the decision of living under that regime. Now, we will never conform to that regime, no matter what. We won't, we can't, because it doesn't suit us at all. We know that. But there are gonna be people who are, are gonna agree with us and they will wanna exit us these places where these regimes are gonna take place. And that's where I feel um, people have to make the choice. If they wanna live underneath that or get out, basically get out of that regime and that's that's why all this has to play out for this to happen and then people have to make the decision then if they'll live under it or not you know as i said before the three diseases cognitive dissonance presupposition and the main one right now is um <clears throat> stockholm syndrome they feel they have to be under a leader and they have to be led hence why we call them sheep or muggles so those sheep and muggles, they will have to wake up at some point to decide if they want to live under that regime. <laughs> Once you do not want to live under it, we'll exit us. That's what I believe. So the Most High is allowing all this to play out. And we, yes, we can look at it, but it doesn't really affect us because we're never going to conform. No man here is going to conform. And you're not going to tell anybody else to conform either. So the ones well, who are going to listen to us, they'll do the same. I'll just I'll just add that um, you know yes it's BRICS it's uh, um, China and Russia 
but Russia and China are dying, you know, <laughs> their populations are, are collapsed, right? Um, and, and, you know, Africa, right, especially sub-Saharan Africa, is growing, and growing. it's a young nation, yeah? Um, and our power, you know, our, our place in the world is increasing while theirs is diminishing. So, yes, right now, BRICS is another, you know, competing monetary system. But as those powerhouses like, the, you know, Russia and China start to disappear, right, it's going to be driven by us. Also, you mentioned, so I'm glad you mentioned Africa because... A lot of people are really distracted about what's going on between, you know, Israel and Palestine. And as far as this world war, Africa plays pretty much the biggest part in this war. And that's how you can really tell which how how things are shifting between one superpower to another. Now you have to look at what's going on in the Congo right now. You have many things going on in the Congo at the moment. With the humanitarian crisis, is actually ten times worse than it is in Gaza but you're not getting any news coverage on that. And that's because you have these two superpowers as they started that war in Sudan, and it will still continue to trickle in. And they tried to do it in Niger, but got overcome, you know what I mean, by the, the people there who are backed by Russia. So Africa really is really going to tell the tale who's winning the war outside of the currency shifting. Who is going to gain control of the natural resources? Because you know that natural resources are really how you finance wars. A lot of these nations are losing a lot of money, especially America. America is just digging themselves into even more debt by supporting these, these wars in Ukraine and in Israel and all this type of stuff. So um, like I said, you have situations going on in the Congo where now you have the Tutsi rebels who are backed by Rwanda. And I think that Rwanda, if I'm not mistaken, are in cahoots with Russia and China. Um, or I'm not for no, I think they're in cahoots with America. Pardon me. And America is trying to take the natural resources away from the Congo so they can support themselves. So, yeah, just keep an eye out on Africa, what's going on there, because that's going to be a major key on how this world turns out. Yeah. Yeah. You can see Africa, a lot of uh, a lot of the countries of West Africa are waking up, kicking the French out, kicking, want to kick the Americans out. You can see them. It's all it's all it's like it's all folding. Everything's yeah. coming together now. Yes, but my, my 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 problem with that is is like you're trading one oppressor for another because yeah, they might be kicking out the French and you know not dealing with the West anymore, but they going right over and supporting Russia. They falling into the hands of Russia. And that's the problem, you know, Listen, is that like I said, they're just trading one oppressor for another. They're all in the same club. They're all in the same club, all the leaders, even the African leaders, okay? But they have to do things to suit their people. Okay, it may they may be under the guise of they're working for the people, but they're really working for themselves and trying to keep their people happy. But they are all in the same club, all those African leaders. I I I, I kind of disagree with that. That um, I think yes, yes, for the most part, um, all the African leaders were were appointed and controlled by the West. Yes, but that has that is changing. Um, as I said, the, uh, they, they have to do things to suit the people where they are. They can't be as blatant as the other leaders. They can't do it. They've got to suit the people. Same as Erdogan. I mean, Erdogan's doing a great job going against Israel, but he always has been the one against the, the, the Western world. That's why the UK don't like Turkey. Okay, And Turkey has no debts. Right. Well, I was, I was just saying, going to say that, um, yeah, for this idea of trading one oppressor for another, mm -hmm. right? There's something shifted with Africa where they're, say, they're starting to say, well, rather than selling our cocoa beans for, you know, pennies for a sack of them, right? We're going to we're going to start making our own chocolate and uh, you can come and buy that instead. Right. right? There is a it's massive a economic struggle. Yeah, there's a massive economic economic shift at the moment. You're right. And then that's where the, the, the trading um, uh route that Israel wants to have is part of that and Africa knows that and they won't want that to happen because but, that would be a massive thing but what what the, the point the uh, main point I want to make with that is that um yeah it's okay with, with like cocoa beans and and uranium even but the next phase of this agenda 
it is going to be dependent on you know resources from Africa. Yeah, the uh, cobalt and uh, you know coal tan and stuff that um, you know is is going to power all this you know electronic system, right? All the all the batteries and things, right? Comes from Africa. So now they're gonna you know they're changing a relationship and saying you know uh, if you if you want if you want some of this stuff now you're gonna have to pay market rates, right? Um, is 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 a, sh a sign that Africa is starting to find itself, find its identity, and stand up to the system. Yeah. So right on it, time, yeah. I add, I might add. And then, Dave, you're saying about two, you look at two, next, one more year, 2024? In... Uh, okay. Um, yeah. I <laughs> I made that prediction a while back about um, how I believe America is, is essentially going to disappear in the next two years. Which means the second exodus has to happen fairly soon, within a year or so. Um, I, I also had a bit of a synchronicity that actually confirmed the date to me. Actually, um, I don't know if I should uh, go into it. It's a bit. It uh, takes a little bit of explanation, but uh, should I? I'm all ears. I mean, you. You share, look, share whatever information you think may be helpful to the people. I mean, we don't know. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen in 2024. I've listened to what you have said pertaining to the uh, the signs and the skies, et cetera, as far as the X across the nation. We see clearly where we're headed right now. I mean, you know, this has all happened extremely fast. Uh, it, it's been sudden with what we're seeing. Uh, South Africa is leading the way in trying to take these Israelis to the criminal court. So we're seeing African nations having a major role in these world events that we have not seen in times past. And speaking boldly at that, there is no shame in President Ramaphosa uh, when he presents uh, his case clearly for justice and for righteousness. So, and I would assume that's why in many cases they won't allow us to lead anything because we've been treated so unfairly once we get in the position, if we have any bit of righteousness in us, we're going to try to try to right the wrongs. And so South Africa being, you know, one of the last bastion of this colonialism and, and apartheid, they're seeing, they've experienced that. That is still very present to them. Uh, so therefore, when they speak on it, it's with conviction. Uh, so, yeah, anything that's going to help the people, you may be right. Brother Dave, you may be dead wrong, but uh, it is best to say what you feel, think, or possibly believe, and everyone has a chance to say, you know what, hey, I may not believe what you're saying, but at least I've been made aware of it that I may keep both of my eyes open. If you're wrong, great. If you're, if you're right, I've given the proper time by which to prepare. Right. Well, um, I'll just say about the, the part that synchronicities play in, in the way I research stuff. Um, so, uh, as you said, um, Brother Lee, that um, my, uh, my ideas came from looking at the signs in the sky. And I was looking at great eclipses. Right? And America had um, a, a, the great American eclipse back in 2017. Um, and seven years on from that is another eclipse that crosses that first one. Um, and it kind of led me to the idea that um, it's warning of the super volcano underneath Yellowstone Park erupting, essentially, and taking out America with it. Um, now, um, just again, just to talk about the, uh, the synchronicities, I decided to start looking at um at eclipses through throughout the years. I right? and you know, I don't know what I'm looking for. So yeah, I'm looking at all these eclipses. And one of the synchronicities that happens when I'm looking for stuff, if I see my name or my birthday associated with something, it means I have to have a closer look at it. So I was looking at the eclipses and I saw one on my birthday in 1831. So I thought I'd better have a close look at it. And I found that the eclipse in 1831 was a prelude to 
the Nat Turner Rebellion that happened later on in that year, okay? And that eclipse not only went over the spot where the rebellion started, but it followed the path of a rebellion, right? And that rebellion started on August 21st, right, 1831, which is the uh, an anniversary of the first slave touching down in America. So to me, that's another confirmation, right, that uh, these eclipses are significant. So, um, okay, this gets a bit involved. I'm looking at the nature of um, time at the moment, how time works. And, it, and as incredibly as it sounds, time is cyclical and it follows what, what was called the Fibonacci sequence. I don't know if anyone's familiar I've with the Fibonacci it. sequence. Yeah, so um, the next number in the sequence is a, the previous two numbers added together. But between each two numbers in a Fibonacci sequence is a, a particular number, right? and it's a 0.618. And that number is significant because everything in this world is built around that number. It's uh, As far as I'm concerned, it's it's a proof that the Most High constructed this place, right? That this this number, you know, if, um, let me give you an example. Um, my arm, I can't, you can't see it. My whole arm. Some of the golden ratio. The golden ratio, yes. So that, if my arm is, um, this part of my arm is, uh, sorry, this part of my arm is one, then the whole arm is 1.618, yeah? Everything, your, all your proportions are built around that. Um, all the you know the wildlife and the trees and the Everything. hurricanes all Everything. built around that number. Anyway, mm -hmm. so um, I'm 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 reading a book about um, what they call fractal time, and uh, somebody the the author basically starts talking about how to figure out when certain things are going to happen by applying this knowledge to it. So. I decided to look at um, the last time America had a, um, a you know, a catastrophic event, 9-11, right? And I thought, okay, if I know my birth, you know, how old I was when 9-11 happened, if I times that number, so it's, I was 38 when it happened, if I times that number by 0 0.618, which means I've got 23 and a half, right, and add that to 38, that will tell me how old I'll be when the next event happens. Okay. So I did that, you know, uh, and it works out that I'll be 61 and a half, right? Which works out at August this year. So um, this year or next year? This year. Oh, sorry, next year. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm, I think I'm in 2024. So next year. Yeah. Didn't August hit. next year. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredible. So if I if I worked it out exactly, I I I can almost guarantee it'll be August 21st next year. Okay. So let me ask you real quick, Elder. What is the solution to this prophecy as far as our people are concerned? How do and, 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 you, and, you, and from your perspective, how do we prepare ourselves for this? We have people in America who are still there. You know, are they supposed to wait for something like the Scott of crack? I'm pretty sure that's not what you believe. But, you know, in, in, in essence, do you what is the solution as far as our people, how they prepare themselves for this exodus? I think we have to, uh, you know, trust in the most high and keep our eyes open. I think there'll be something that will be undeniable that will, that will cause us to to get up and out of these places and not just yeah, they, in America, but everywhere. Cause there needs to be some kind of a, like a warning. Oh, we better move from there. The so most high, the most high says we are going to see this as, as so amazing that we will we'll forget what happened in all in Egypt. This will overshadow it. This will be so such a sign of the most high um, that, you know, we'll no longer remember what happened in Egypt. Well, it, it will see this the Israelites and the stranger, or you think everybody will see it, but a lot of people won't realize what it is. Again, I think I think, so, uh, and I can't tell you what it is, but yeah. something's going to happen that will cause us to to say, right, time to leave. And uh, not only that, I think uh, it also says that uh, you know we will be taken. So it's not just us 
that says it's time to leave will be taken um you know to wherever it is i believe it's africa but you know i don't know um and others will get the opportunity the option to go with us um but i i can't tell you what that is but um whatever it is it's going to be amazing and i believe it's going to happen you know within the next year Okay. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> okay. Get ready. We... Get ready. Um, as 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 Brother Lee said, things are moving very, very fast, uh, and as they should be, because you know, oops, hello, <laughs> as they should be, because um, you know, our our captivity ended, you know, th you know, three years ago, like, th three years ago, four years ago, yeah, um, so. You know, and we've we've felt this this uh, snowball effect. You know, we've seen events happening in a in a in like a giant snowball building and building. Um, so yes, um, and the characteristics of that that sort of snowball effect is that um, it gets faster and faster. You know, as we get approach the end. So yeah, we're going to see events happening a lot faster and faster, culminating in us leaving these places. Yeah. Well, one question, you know, Dave. Do you know when you do the Fibonacci? How how do you know to times it by your? Well, I don't know. I think I think that's a flawed argument. I think it's a flawed um, calculation. But the synchronicity part of it is that when I did it, it worked out to be around about the time that I thought it was going to be. Ah, I see. I see. I see. So I, I yeah, don't that... know if that's the right way of doing it, but. Uh, but yeah, um, when I did it, it just so happened to be, you know, um, significant to me. Yeah, that's uh, a lot of the guys, you know, one was heavy in the stock game that the Fibonacci charts are very important as far as prediction on how stocks and companies will move. And so a lot of guys that's in in, uh, in the stock market that's investing use those Fibonacci charts to kind of determine exactly which way a stock may swing. Uh, so I've heard of it before. As it pertains to what may happen, our brother Dave, the, the thing is, is that, that that what you're speaking of, that that event can happen during this conversation. I think that's where we are right now. It can happen in the next three minutes, five minutes, 10 seconds. Uh, we're seeing or we're going to see these nations turn their backs on this United States and all the, and the Israelis and everyone else. Uh, this can get ugly and this can get ugly fast. Uh, a matter of fact, I think it already has. Some of us may not be quite aware of it. Uh, the life that we're living in these quote unquote Western nations in the hands of our of our captors, this, you know, I could actually, I can go into my job, swipe my badge and, and keep going through the gates. Uh, if they decide to go to war with the global South and that's what it looks like, I mean, they can wreak havoc in all of these Western nations to where, you know, anywhere you go, you might have to pull out an ID and then open up your bags to be searched and things like that. This is a, this is a war, even if we're just speaking from conventional warfare or asymmetric warfare, you are not trying to fight all the Muslim nations on this entire earth. That's not even a smart idea, but this is pretty much where they're headed. Uh, and I do feel these these Arabs are going to unite Every bit of the American interest that's sitting in the Middle East and anywhere else is going to be attacked if they decide to cut off all the petrol. I mean, our life can be miserable. You're probably going to pay $15, $10 for a gallon of gas at the pump, uh, along with you having to be on your guard everywhere you go in a public space. So this can get ugly fast. Americans are not really paying attention to it right now for the simple fact that they've seen these things before. And it's always blown over. And there has been no dead bodies coming back here. I think if that begins to happen, then the whole sentiment towards this war and the backing of these Israelis will change also. So we'll see. This can happen. I mean, I'm certain, my brother Dave, I'm with you as far as something that's going to happen that's going to be unprecedented to let us all know exactly what time it is. But at the same time, when that thing happens, it's going to be something horrific also. It's not going to be like a pleasurable thing. You know what I mean? No, no. And uh, um, I think, again, the way the Most High works, 
you know he gets us to do things to rehearse things so that when it happens we're ready so um so if you remember what happens over passover right he says you know eat eat your food right with your belt on and your shoes on your feet you know because you'll be ready to run or eat on the run because you're going to be leaving really quickly yeah <laughs> So I think the next exodus will be exactly the same. It'll be, you know, we're leaving now. Go, you know, don't don't pack anything. Don't, you know, because you're yeah, going. Yeah, that's why I say it anyway. Okay. The interesting times. That's it. Hold on to your popcorn, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I don't. I don't know. I don't feel as though. In the same hurry up fashion, we won't be leaving in a hurry up fashion. I think it's going to be urgent uh, as far as leaving these nations. But a lot of us have a chance to also to, to separate ourselves from them because that's the one thing that I think many of our people are not going to be willing to do. Uh, you, you have many of us who have found some type of professional in their profession. They have found success in various sectors of business and things like that. Uh, there are many of our men who are wealthy, many of our people who are wealthy uh, and have done quite well in spite of being in this uh, in this system. And many of them are of the mindset that I have applied myself and therefore I have been able to achieve thus uh, this status based on my merit. Uh, and if you told them about racism and injustice and all of that, they'll look you in the face and tell you that, hey, look, I look just like you. I came from the ghetto. I came from the gutter. I was able to make it. The reason why you didn't is because you have not applied yourself. So therefore, they are not looking to leave here or abandon this system because they have found some type of success in it. So it's going to be quite hard to even encourage them to separate and let this go because they're not feeling the same way as we do. So uh, this separation between the righteous and the wicked, uh, that's going to be major because a lot of people, I'm, I'm, it's my feeling. I don't have, I've never done a, a survey on it, but it's my feeling if many of our people had to leave the houses and the cars and the way that we're accustomed to living in the West, to go live in any wilderness, let's say, for any length of time, they'll say no. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I hundred percent agree on that. And truth be told, I would say about nine, that's about 98% of the people mm -hmm. in America that makes up that population as far as those who are unwilling to um, you know, get out of their comfort zone. You know, a lot of people are comfortable, you know, they have jobs, they have all these type of things going on. Even in the midst of a burning house, people are still trying to make their beds. So that's right. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, I, I just don't, you know, see a lot of people, uh, you know, leaving that place, even in the midst of chaos. Uh, well, I think, um, I think, uh, well, first of all, not all of us are going to make it anyway. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. Everyone's going to make a choice, right? Going to have to make a choice. And there's not an awful lot of us are going to make it, essentially. Um, the, uh, the other thing is, that before it happens, there'll be a lot of us out of our comfort zone. Yeah. Um, what's going to happen? Um, and what's happened to me all my life, but well not all my all my awake life, shall we say, is that uh, the uh, the illusion of the solidity of this system has, is you know has been falling apart, has been you know been stripped away, and uh, um, we're going to see. In the next few uh, next year or so, more and more of that illusion falling apart. So, you, you know, you said comfort zone. People, you know, there are some people still in the comfort zone right now. But you know, give it another month or two or three, yeah, they won't be in that comfort zone. You know, when interest rates go up and spiral up crazily, and they start realizing, you know, bloody hell, if. Uh, if if things don't change, I won't be able to pay my mortgage. Um, what do I do next? You know, they they'll be out of their comfort zone pretty quick. Let me elaborate more on what I mean by comfort. I I do agree with you. Um, you know, people are out of their comfort zone comfort zone to an extent in America. But I was talking more about new environment, like a to something that they're 
absolutely unfamiliar with. Um, yeah, they out of their comfort zone, but they're familiar with a lot of things and you know society, their surroundings, and things like that. A lot of people are really going really going to be reluctant to leave America because they just don't know what's out there, you know. And that's where the trust in the Most High comes. But you know, I think that's going to be a, a major lack in trust in the Most High. Uh, but yeah, I think that. Is you know when it comes to comfort zone, a lot of people are not going to be able to leave that environment. But I, you know, I'm interested, you know, to see how the things you said how they're going to play out. And I'm really interested in this new 2024 election. To me, that's going to show a lot of hands. Um, who's going to take office? Who's going to be the next puppet of America? And what type of agenda are they going to be pushing? So I'm interested. To I'm see betting that. Trump. Yeah, I, I'll bet. I bet Trump. Um, I, if if anything, I know good and well, it doesn't matter who's in the White House. Uh, our circumstances and their treatment towards us doesn't change. It doesn't matter who's in there. Uh, we were specifically warned not to vote anyone that's uh, not of our people to lead us. Uh, so therefore, it doesn't matter who's in there. Our, our, our treatment and our position within the society uh, remains the same in this caste system. It, it, it doesn't change. It doesn't matter who's the president. Uh, however, what will be important is that our people are beginning to really withdraw our hands from this system, from all the systems of government, as far as participating in them and trying to vote, especially in the voting aspect of it, because we've seen that it has not benefited us, benefited us any. So therefore, we're now beginning to just let go of the wicked system altogether. And as we continue to do that, the system will crumble, and the people of these nations will actually turn against us uh, even more so than they have been. Uh, you know, Brother Dawid mentioned as far as, you know, you guys were discussing the people about the many governments and the people uh, and that sometimes the way the governments go may not be in line with the people, but the people are the direct represent, they're being represented by the governments, they elected them. So if a government is in, in essence wicked, it's the wicked people that place them there. Those who are in government are part of the populace. So there's no, to me, there's no distinction between a wicked government and wicked people that's within that country or that landmass. The, the people that's running the government, you didn't just pluck them out of nowhere. They were part of the population of that government and they also represent them. So these wicked governments were devised by the very wicked people that elected them and they are part of that populace. So I don't think the most high will make any distinction between a government and its people. It's one and the same. I, I, I just want to say why I think, uh, why I said Trump is going to win because um, I, I, before the Biden you know, election thing, I said that uh, um, Donald Trump was going to be the, the last president um, because there's there's um, predictive programming for it. A um, hundred years ago, there was a writer called Ingersoll Lockwood who wrote a book called um, "Little The Marvelous Adventures of Little Baron Trump. Now, Baron Trump is, you know, Donald Trump's son. Yeah, and it's yeah. a guy, you know, it's about this, this boy, Baron Trump, going on um, these adventures at the behest of somebody called the Don, right? So it kind of is it's, it's talking about Donald Trump, right? But Ingersoll Lockwood also wrote another book called The Last President. Uh, mm -hmm. And it uh, described the election of a, a president which almost caused a civil war. And it, in almost the same way as Donald Trump's election was. So I'm, I'm again, I'm saying, and I've said even when uh, Biden was elected and it looked like I was totally wrong, that... Trump will be the last president of the United States. I'm truth be told, I don't want to, you know, like at the end of the day, it is what it is. But I honestly feel that something's going to happen to Trump if he does get elected. Um, just seeing what they're trying to do, how they're trying to, per they're doing everything in their power to stop him from getting in. Um, and I think this is behind the scenes a, power, a, a war between superpowers. Um, I personally believe that Trump uh, has a relationship with the East. Um, and I think that the, you know, the people who run in America out of London, you know, House of Rothschild and people of them of that sort 
are uh, still trying to main and trying to keep the status quo in the West. And I think the East is trying to change that. So, you know, it's, I don't see no other reason why the media is persecuting him so much. They're trying to come at him with all these sorts of indictments, you know, and we know that if they can't shut you up, they're going to try to um, humiliate you publicly, you know, and if that doesn't work, they're going to try to lock you up. And if that doesn't work, then we know it was the last result. So, I'm interested to see if he does get in, is he going to be able to maintain his presidency? Well, yeah, I, I think, um, again, one of the things that uh, was talked about last time uh, while he was in um, was the connection between him and King Cyrus. Yeah. Right? So the Israelis were, were making that connection. There was even a, um, a coin they made with a picture of Trump and King Cyrus next to each other saying, He's the new King Cyrus. Mm -hmm. So they made that connection for whatever reason they had. But I'm making a connection because King Cyrus was the one that let us go from, from Babylon. Mm -hmm. right? So um, I, I think there, there's a correlation there. And just as um, you know, we're talking about Fibonacci sequence and events happening over and over again right, in a cyclical fashion, um, you know, it, it seems to me that you know, Trump being the last president of the United States and connected, at, you know, to King Cyrus, who let the Israelites go from Babylon. Uh, I think I see a correlation there. You know, Netanyahu, uh, they find Trump to be a friend of them somehow. And that's why he felt that way. Uh, and I guess Trump felt emboldened to take the U.S. Uh, embassy and move it to Jerusalem uh, from Tel Aviv. I believe that's where it was. So he is he has done some things that you know the Israelis would expect him to do. Uh they're they were calling him this Cyrus because you know they're they're expecting him to do things favorable for them. Keep in mind, Trump is the kind of man he is easily flattered. <clears throat> you know, uh so they're gonna they're gonna get to him by way of flatteries. And so therefore I'm thinking that's probably one of the gestures he's made. And I think what we're seeing going on right now in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, a lot of that has to do with the fact that he made that move to take that embassy and move it <clears throat> to Jerusalem. I, I'm thinking that's part of why we're seeing some of the dust-ups that we're seeing. Uh, and, you know, this big talk about these uh, Israelis having this talk, this uh, having the right to defend themselves. I mean, by the day, if I came in your house and robbed you, and took your family and stuck them in the basement and killed you, if your son, your brother, and your uncle came and kicked the door down to take your house back and to fight me, do I have the right to defend myself in a home that I have stolen? Do I have the right to defend myself in the land that I have stolen? Uh, do I have the right to defend myself against the, the families of a man that I have murdered? Not killed in self-defense, but murdered. And the answer to that to any sane man with any bit of righteousness, the answer to that is no. So what we're going to see clearly here is a stance between the righteous and the unrighteous. And I'm thinking everyone is being given the proper time by which to make a decision on which way, who are you going to side with? Because when this thing happens, as we see it's happening quickly, there will be no last minute, let me switch positions here. So I think the whole world right now, people in faraway places, have had an opportunity to look up and research this whole Israeli situation, how they came into being, where they're from, and what has transpired to cause the actions that we're seeing today in that land. And it's because of this knowledge that has been increased, many of the people that have supported them in times past no longer supports them. Okay. Ooh. Well said. Also, I'm interested, you know, as far as Trump, too, um, like you say, he's a very heavily supporter of this Israeli regime, specifically Benjamin Netanyahu. But like you said in the past with the flatteries and things, you made a very good point on that. So I'm interested to see if he does get in, what's his position is going to be on this war between the Palestinians and the Israelis? Is he going to provide more support for the Israelis? You know, is, the, is he going to be bringing America to boots on the ground there? What is he going to do with the situation in Africa? Like, I'm interested to see, you know, because Trump is a wild boy. 
He's a wild bull in, in the net. You know, he's, you know, he he's power stricken. So a lot of these things that the Biden and regime regime is very timid on, Trump is to me is going to come full force with these things. So, you know, I don't think that no one's going to be able to save this Israeli regime, you know, and um not even Trump. So that's what I said. I'm just interested to see what his what his position is going to be in this conflict that's going on here in this area. You know, uh a, a phrase that just popped up into my head is, you know, the most high put it on, you know, the Pharaoh's heart or put it on so-and-so's heart to do something. And I wonder if um, a lot of those occasions were written in hindsight. Yeah. Because, you know, looking back at an event and saying, well, obviously he was there because the most high put him there to do, you know, True. this thing. Um and again, I, I think um, I think Trump is one of those characters that you know the most high will put it on his heart to do certain things, right? So that uh, you know that the the, um, the exodus and uh, all the other events come to pass. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I I it feels like this whole world is a story that's already written, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we're just we're just sitting here watching it play out. Right. So let me ask you real quick, Elder Dave, which, um, how did you, of course we don't know per se, but how do you see this Trump situation affecting our people? Do you think that he's going to help us out? Because I don't think anybody's helping us out. But as far as the exit, what part do you think he'll play in this exit concerning our people? Well, um, I believe it was, uh, you know, Trump has done some kind of uh, contradictory things. Um, when he was in office, you know, I think it was um, uh, during his time that the uh, recognition of our 400 years um, came in. And also that um, I think it was him who took away the automatic right to be an American, even if you were born there. Um, that I can't remember exactly, but but I see little tiny movements you know, towards this um this idea of exodus. And I can see, I can literally can see Trump saying, okay, you guys get out. You just get out. We'll, you know, we'll we'll fly you over, just leave. Yeah. Well, the, the election's not till November next year, right? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm just I'm just putting pieces together. And right now there are some pieces that are a bit contradictory. Yeah. So mm. maybe my August 21st date isn't right. I don't know. I'm just going by synchronicities. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was significant, but I don't know. You know, before mm -hmm. before that um that synchronicity, um, I was saying it was you know some point um late late um 2024, early 2025. So you know, who knows? I'm just I'm just putting things together. Yeah. Sometimes Everyone's when you get speculate. sorry, everyone's allowed to speculate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, that's what I respect. I respect. I respect your stance and how you delivered. You know, um, your perspective. You know, you kept it open, open ended. You know, what I mean, like a lot of our people, I've seen even in the past where they say this date, this is going to happen, and didn't come to find out the most I made them look like fools. You know, so it's just about how you approach it, which I can respect. And like you said, at the end of the day, um, if it happens, great. If it doesn't, still great, because we, those, we see what the Most High is doing on the earth and is working to, in our favor. You know, even though you won't see this in the, you know, in the public eye, those behind the scenes, those who are really in tune know that the Most High is working towards restoring righteousness on this earth again. So regardless of how it happens, we know the end. We, we all know the end game. Yeah, yeah. So um, the, the details are not that important. Yes, we can look at them and, and analyze them as much as we want. But, you know, realistically, I think all this has been allowed by the Most High for us as Israelites to wake up to what's happening. And then when the time comes, when we have to go, we go. And the ones who want to stay, will stay. Simple as that. That's yeah, what I think. Uh, yeah, and somebody, uh, I, I ended up watching a, an old video that I watched uh, back in 2011. <laughs> And uh, one of the things, it's basically summed up the situation we're in at the moment. Um, it was a, a, a guy called Bill Wood who said that it's like, um, 
it's like a, a two grandmasters are playing chess right now. And, uh, you know, one player looks down and realizes that it's checkmate in seven moves. And he looks up and sees that his opponent sees it too. Right. The, the point is that he's already lost the game, but there are still moves left on the board. Right? So right now, all he can do is prolong the game. Right? Yeah. And that's where we are. Pro, he's prolonging the game. And he's trying to take out as many of uh, the opponent's pieces as he can, even though he knows he's going to lose. Yeah, that's where we are. Good that's analogy. an excellent analogy. Yeah, good analogy on that. Um, yeah, the war is already won. Um, like I was just saying before, like um, the Most High is already hundred moves ahead of uh, his opponent. You know what I mean? And like I said, they're going to try to prolong, but even that is coming to an end. They're not even to prolong. I guess they're like on their last few moves, you know, their last few moves. They didn't try everything. That's why, like I said, the urgency to try to build this canal through the Gaza Strip coming into the, the Red Sea. That's a that's a move that they're trying to make. Um, the situation in Africa, you know, they're, they're losing the war in Africa. They're losing a lot of allies in Africa. I'm talking about the West and Israel. Um, so, yeah, you know, they're running out, they're running out of time. You know, I, I'm wondering if if they noticed it, but I'm going to tell you something I've experienced, right? So last Sunday, and I wanted to share this on my channel. I'm still going to go and do a, do a short video on it. I'm, I entered into the local uh, clubhouse at one of, the, uh, one of the golf courses that I frequent in the area. And I'm in there. There was an older white gentleman. He's a customer. And there's the man behind the desk. And so... I paid my green fee, but I had to look at my phone to pull up an app, right? So I'm pulling this app up. This older white guy is right here in front of my face. He's kind of facing me, right? And while I'm on my phone, he says, uh, he just says to me, he says, uh, Google 1965. Now I'm not even paying attention to this man. I'm just looking at my phone. Now, when I heard 1965, the first thing I thought was Voting Rights Act, but I didn't say anything. I'm still in my phone. Then he says, Voting Rights Act. Now, this man may be about three or four feet from me. And after I punched a few things in my phone, then I realized what he said. I said, man, are you talking to me? He said, yeah. He said, now you want reparations. Now, Brother Dave, I've never seen this man in the 50 years of my existence on this planet. Didn't say a word to him. Just walked in this clubhouse, paid my green fee, and was pulling up this app. And this is what he said to me. And it dawned on me what he said. <clears throat> and then I said, you've made everyone else whole that you have harmed. You owe. And I walked out the clubhouse. Now, could I, could I have stayed there and engaged in some big old long drawn out conversation with this man? I certainly could have. But I've learned not to expect justice or righteousness out of unjust and unrighteous people. Uh, but I don't know if he woke up that day. I don't know what the conversation was prior to me coming into that place. But the call for reparations here in America and, and from here, the horn has been blown and the winds have been blown to the diaspora where our people are. It is causing a vexation in the midst of these Europeans. Uh, they don't want to pay. They have paid everyone else. You had Charles. He's not a king or anything to me. He's a king to some white person in England someplace. You know what I mean? That's some regular white dude as far as I'm concerned. Uh, he's an old white man. So he went to, uh, to I don't know, somewhere in Africa, Kenya, I believe, and was, and, and was telling them uh, how it was a terrible thing. No apologies. Uh, no need to make restitution. Uh, or pay reparations for the damage and the theft and everything else that uh, his family has caused. So it's it's interesting. I think they're seeing what they're doing. They know exactly what they're doing. And uh, now that they're seeing us actually trying to bring their feet to the fire, it, it upsets them. Interesting. And that, you know, that, that incident at the golf course was a prime example for me to, yeah, I've been hearing people speak about it, but that was my moment to experience it. And this was last Sunday. 
Mm. Hey, uh, sorry, Phil. I, I, I got to run. Uh, Shabbat just started here, so I'm going to want my food to get cold. I got to start eating uh, my food. So, um, yeah, once again, I appreciate y'all for having me on. Um, like I mentioned before, I was going to come in for some time. Actually, I was able to be on longer than I expected. So, you know, this is a good, good conversation that we had. Um, so everybody be safe, you know, peace and blessing to you and your families. I extend my blessings out to y'all and uh, I'll be looking forward to the next conversation. But yeah, I got to run. I got to get ready for uh for Shabbat meal. Okay, All right, peace brother. And y'all peace and y'all bless to you and your house. All right. Y'all bless. Peace. Peace and y'all bless. Peace. Yeah. I, I, I think they've known about this for a long time. They, they're, they're starting to get into the, the mainstream awareness now that not only, you know, is is this idea of reparations, you know, starting to hit mainstream, but also the realization of who we are as well is starting to to filter in there. Um, <laughs> even though I don't think I don't think the reparations are going to be in the form that you know um, we expect. It's not going to be in dollars because the the dollars are worthless, absolutely <laughs> worthless anyway. So. Um, it's it's going to be it's going to have to be in in gold and silver just like just like the first um you know the first exodus but the awareness is there um i, I saw something the other day and now it's just slipped my memory oh, i've got i must be in a bad way I'm, stuff is going in in my head now again um but yeah there's you, there, you're on there vacation mode yeah, vacation mode. So I'm saying, what the hell? Go on. <laughs> <laughs> What's the weather like there? It's beautiful. It's uh, you know, nice and sunny. Nice and hot and sunny. Where are you in St. Lucia again? I'm back in St. Lucia. Okay, good stuff. Good stuff. Nice one, man. That's the place to be, my brother. That's the place to be. In, England, in the UK. Oh, my goodness me. Not good at all. What about you, Lee? What's the weather like where you are? Right now, it's probably in the 60s. Uh, I'm trying to get around the golf in here before. Uh, it's currently 66 here. Okay. 66 and, and a little bit of cloudy, but it's 66. And hopefully I can squeeze around the golf and be home before the Sabbath and be nice and relaxed. Uh, doesn't doesn't your grandson throw off your golf swing? Though, if he's on the uh, you know what? I've got, I'm going to teach him that game, too. Uh, okay. Are oh, you going to say, peace and y'all bless to him, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's a... Uh, my grandsons, anywhere I move, they're going to be right there at my hip, you know. Uh, but yeah, brothers, I'm certainly seeing some things that's indicating that uh, that they're aware. I don't know if they know what's going on, but they know something is going on. Uh, and they're going to lash out. Uh, I'm thinking the individuals are going to lash out. As you know, that man said what he said to me. Uh, you know, you're going to have you're going to have uh, where I think you're going to have instances where the increased violence against us. Uh, we're going to bear witness to that because I, I don't think this is the type of people that will, you know, just like in South Africa and all the other places where the European was kicked out, right? When he was kicked out, whatever roads he helped build, whatever rail railway he constructed or helped to construct, no, he didn't do any of the work. They blew them up and they destroyed it. They're the type of people of the mindset to where if I can't have it, no one else will. So as they begin to lose power, lose grip, lose influence, et cetera, this is going to have a, it's going to be, the results are going to be violent towards us. And we we need to be on our guard, our elderly and I, our youth, as far as what they may look to do to us as they start seeing the loss of power and the increase of our power and, and our, us having confidence and being strengthened by the most high, et cetera, they're going to bring them, they will be coming against us, which in turn will strengthen the most high with us against them. I think that's how this is going to play out. This is just my view. Yeah. I, I say that spiteful attitude. I, um, it reminds me of, uh, of uh, the last scenes of the Wrath of Khan, Star Trek, the Wrath of Khan, uh. <laughs> and he's he's dying, right? And uh, he's he's going to dis he set off a or, or set off a countdown for an explosion that's going to kill him as well. But I'm he listening. Says, I'm listening. He says, you know, from hell's heart, I spit at you. 
you know, from for hate's sake, I, I, so my hell's heart, I stab at thee. For hate's sake, I spit my last breath at thee. Yeah, mm. that's the kind of attitude of you know uh, that you're saying. If I can't have it, you're not going to have it. You you're not going to have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's 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 sad. But I think I think a lot of us, a lot of our people, need to need to see that. I think a lot of us don't believe it. I think a lot of us would like to give the benefit of the doubt because we've been trained to do that. And I think that's a good thing. But I think we're going to realize as a collective, the reality of our circumstances are going to be placed before our face. Many of us are not willing to face that. Well, well um, as a, a science fiction-y thing I, I, I found um, recently, again, I was looking into the nature of time and as as incredible as this might sound, I believe the American government had got themselves some technology that allows them to manipulate time, to actually, you know, go back, and make changes and decisions, which uh, will affect the future and have things happen the way they they want it. Um, you think <clears throat> the the project I'm thinking about is called Project Looking Glass? Yeah, yeah. So um, long time yes ago. but the interesting thing about that um which was again reminded to me just recently is that um yes they were they started making changes manipulating things having things go their way but there was a certain date that where all timelines converged yeah that was uh december 21st 20 um 2012 okay oh, wow. so the, the, what that means is that no matter what changes they made, the same wait, wait, timeline wait, would, would happen after December 21st, 2021. Uh, 2012, um, sorry. Um, so, so yeah, they could make changes, but only up to December 21st. Right? So no matter what they did, the same result's going to happen, which means that... Um, which essentially was the great awakening of mankind, the, the apocalypse, uh, which means that, you know, they're eventually, no matter what they do, they're going to fall. So up until then, I think they really thought they would find a technological way to beat this, to beat the most high. Yeah, but uh, I think the most yeah, high had the last laugh. They're, they're still trying. They're still trying. They're still these... trying, but in this way, they, you know, they thought they had the ultimate weapon, you know, manipulate time so that they can get the results they want. But the Most High, you know, basically blocked that, saying that no matter what you do, there's nothing you can do to change it. Well, on that note, my brothers, I have to fly myself. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, yeah thank you all for your presence, and I'm so honored, and also I'm grateful to be on this talk and meeting such wise brothers it's great, it's great. great. Yeah, it. yeah. so until next time yes <laughs> beautiful baby okay. so next time we'll chat soon yeah. henry okay yeah we chat soon peace and y'all bless brother Dave. you have a great day bro. next time dave take Lee. care of yourself bless up until the next chat okay. yeah man okay. peace and y'all bless okay peace and yeah, man. that seems like a natural break yeah, yeah. Well, brothers, we, so, we're certainly okay. going to see exactly how this thing pans out. Uh, I mean, a lot of people, there's a lot of brothers sitting up, sitting on here discussing many things. Uh, it's going to be made plain exactly. You know, you know, many of our people, I've made a video here lately. Many of our people are following big, large congregations of brothers teaching the JC aspect of this whole thing. I think this big event that you're speaking about, Brother Dave, and whatever else comes with it, is going to make clear to our people exactly which way we should walk. Those of us who are in error gets a chance to correct ourselves. Uh, so I'm thinking uh, <clears throat> there's an opportunity for change, so to speak, that's coming up. But uh, once that opportunity, once that door opens up and it's been shown which way is right, you make the wrong choice, you're a dead man. I'm thinking that's where we're headed. So uh, yeah. the watchmen are watching, everyone's got their eyes open. We will see exactly how these events will unfold. What well, yeah. don't don't you think though that those people you know who still worship the idol, um, it's getting harder and harder to shoehorn JC into the conversation. 
Yeah, yeah it, it is for them. Prophecy. But they're still doing it. They're still, they're still trying, you know, but it gets, it's getting more and more desperate. They get more yeah. to try to shoehorn him in where he doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. But here, here's the deal, though, Brother Dave. All these big, Israel to the Christian, especially these conservative Christians, Europeans in these many European lands, they are banking that these people of Israel, these Israelis, are God's people. Why they look like them? And I'm not mad at them. You would like to think, eh, you know, I'm not mad at a European to, for painting God white to them. You would want your God to kind of look like you. I'm thinking that's a natural thought process. So I'm not mad at them for that. But the events that you're speaking of, Brother Dave, when it does happen to the Christian and the, the conservatives, et cetera, they're looking at this as JC's on the way back. That's how hmm. they're seeing this. They're not seeing this as some great deliverance for the house of Israel. They're seeing that if JC is going to come back and he's going to save everybody is how they're seeing this. Not never, never ever mentioning that, you know, we have our people who believe in this Christianity as well. And they're being spat on by the very Christians that brought them this book. Well, they, you know, they, and, they, and so, you know, what is your position in heaven? If the, in the quote unquote heaven, they're supposed to be going to, if the very people right here that wholeheartedly believe in this Christianity is spitting in your face, uh, you don't have no place here. If there is such a thing as a heaven, you have no place there either. So uh, th that you're going to go to magically. So uh, they're seeing this of uh, these events entirely differently than we are. Because they but, don't, they don't, they don't want to read the book. Of remember, say because the, the law was only written for the Israelites; it wasn't written for the other nations. Yeah. So we supposed to be the, like the teachers for the other nations, but, but shouldn't shouldn't they um, be looking at it and realizing that? Hang on a minute. When the Israelites go back to their land, there sh should be peace. They, they, that, they that's what the book says. That's what it says. That's, that's what, what it the says. book says. There will be peace when they when they go back to their land. And you know, far from it. Since 1948, it's just it's just been war. You know, the character of those people, you know, isn't isn't in line with the Most High. <laughs> you can see you can see the land. They got the biggest. Um, LGBTQ and all these other uh, alphabet. Pride. How can you have that on a most eyes land? Pride. I mean, yeah, yeah, so it must, it must be it must be obvious or not obvious, but it must be dawning on on the Christians to realize. Well, hang on, these can't be the people. You know, it's not unfolding the way the most I said it would. <laughs> so, but, so yeah. Dave. I hear what you're saying. We're on the same page with that. But they don't see it this way. They are, they're of this belief that JC is about to come and they're about to get raptured up in the sky. That's where, that's where their mindset is. They're not thinking, look, these average hateful individuals can't fathom us ruling over them. Many of them would rather kill themselves before that happens. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, that's not where their mind is. They can't fathom. You people are God's people. That's not even where their mindset is for. For they've been taught from the days of, of their youth that we're actually worthless people. And they have treated us as such. You know what I mean? Uh, us and our children. No regards for our elderly. No regards for our youth. So uh, they're not about to think out of nowhere that we're God's people. And if there were to come to such a reckoning in their minds... They would be they would be terribly afraid. Well, yeah, that's wisdom of Solomon, isn't it? Um, the wisdom of Solomon five one or something like that, where it says, uh, you know, it, is it is it these people? These are the <laughs> children of the Most High. Yeah, <laughs> we thought their lives were madness. You know, we thought, you know, oh, we've 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 you know suddenly realizing their error in this, in the, the deep the depths of their error. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's. That's where I'm, I'm actually waiting for that moment. When, that when the people that. wake up, that will be a very wonderful, interesting and wonderful day to see how everybody reacts. Well, you not know? just them, not just our enemies. It's going to be amazing how some of us are going to react too, because you've got a bunch of us who are diehard Christians that uh, 
don't believe that we're the people. They couldn't fathom themselves leading anyone. So uh, there's many of our people who it's easier for them to believe that Europeans are God's people than it is for them to believe we are because of what they have seen all their lives and what they've been taught. Like a, a... Uh, yeah, I agree. Because uh, uh, the number of um, Jehovah's Witnesses... Uh, oh, um, damn, I, those I, people. I end up, yeah, I end up speaking to. And you find that there's always... There's always a, um, uh, the, you know, a, a, a black Jehovah's Witness who's issued with a white guy, uh, with Jehovah's Witness, almost like a handler. Um, but they, <laughs> they have no idea. They have no idea that uh, we are the people. And yeah, uh, yeah you're right. They're going to be sh um, shocked as the other nation. I, I came across one girl, uh, I think she was a Hamite, and then uh, the young boy, he was a... He was a He's from here, his family from the Caribbean. So I started to t talk to him and he was listening. So what I'm saying, she just dragged him away. <laughs> she dragged him away. Because he was he was listening, he was he was taking notice. But well, you know, it is like I, I say often, if 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 the most high can't make sense, no one will make sense. When you hear this law and you hear the words of the most high, it makes sense to you. Uh, Christianity confuses you because what they're telling you is in total contradiction to their actions towards you. What they're telling you and what you see every day in the street in your daily life, they clash all the time. Uh, mm. It makes no sense. It confuses you, confuses the senses. Uh, and so when you start speaking sense to a man, he, he understands. And so therefore, they're trying their best once that happens to drag, to drag them away. Uh, but, you know, the Most High is going to, all those who are seeking him in righteousness and in truth, these quote-unquote false teachers, etc., they're not going to be allowed to pull those people away. The Most High, gonna, he's going to rescue those people who are seeking him in righteousness and in truth, but got dragged away by someone who deceived them. So they'll they'll be all right. It's like a, I was watching, I was watching some clip about the churches. Basically, to have a church, like in America, you have to abide by the by the laws if they if you want money to buy it to buy a church. Five hundred three C corporations. Yeah. Yeah, the five hundred one three C. It's. I mean, you know, I've, I've done a segment many many years ago uh, on the on my channel. If not, maybe last year. Uh, the pastor, the politician, and the police. I mean, you know, the the church is nothing but a. It's a spy hub. It's a military base of sorts. Uh, our enemies have military bases in all of the nations of the people that they have conquered because they want to monitor exactly what those people are doing that way they may have a military response now we are living here in America we're in headquarters you guys are in the UK you're in the headquarters of our enemies uh, he has to sleep at night and he needs to be well informed of exactly what's going on with us in our gatherings and so therefore he's put military outposts spy hubs in the midst of us. That's why we have more churches than anyone else. Uh, these pastors are in cahoots with this man. Uh, and so are these parishioners. And anything that goes on in that church or in these churches that has any hint of dissension, it will be reported to the authorities because there's nothing well, but a bunch of spies in the midst of you. I mean, it's, that's what it is. It's a place used to es for espionage. That's all. Wasn't wasn't that the case in um during you know slavery days? Yeah, the um the the black pastor would be up there, but there'd be the the, the white master sitting right next to him, making yeah, sure he yeah. didn't say anything. That yeah, he, he wasn't, wasn't supposed, supposed to say. To. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Same system. So, Same system. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is here's here's what's interesting, is that they have ran out of ideas, and we are aware of what they have been doing and what they are doing and with these apparatuses caused you know such as the, the computer and these these cameras and youtube channels we're able to challenge the narrative that they have presented for so long when we didn't have a voice there was no access to media we could not reach large uh large congregations of people so to speak to where we can actually talk some sense into them uh and if we were able to, we were actually controlled in an environment such as a church environment. 
But with this internet, I mean, what we're seeing here is far reaching, you know, uh, and they're unable to stop that. But how can you stop the most high? The most high is truth. There is no stopping that. There is no stopping him. As I said, it's a story that's already been written, you know, no accident that, um, you know, 1948 was when the Jewish people, right, went into the land. And, you know, the, the side effect of that was, you know, the name of Israel was brought back into remembrance. <laughs> uh, I, and at the same time, the Dead Sea Scrolls were, were discovered. Right? So, right, this all this new information came in. And again, 1948, around that time, was essentially the birth of the computer, right? which is, again, what the, um, I believe it's, uh, who was it who said, you know, knowledge will be increased and people will run to and forth and to and fro. Yeah. This is the time when knowledge is increased and people will run to and fro. And uh, this is what the Book of Remembrance was written for. So that we would know, you know, at this time, what, you know, who we are and uh, who our most high is. I think it's, I think it's interesting times. And uh, mm, I think a lot of those who are, who have not been sure on which way to go, those of us who are walking in the law, we're going to, I think we're going to see those people seek us out uh, because there's many, there's many people that are sitting on the fence that don't, that have heard this word and, and, and they don't know which way to go. Uh, so I, I think that uh, many of us who are walking in this law and teaching it, uh, there's a lot of questions that people are seeking to have answered, and they're going to ask, uh, especially as things are getting rougher economically. I'm certain you guys are seeing that over there. Uh, you know, a lot of people are, the position that they once held, they no longer have. Things are much more difficult for them. That's not just our people. That goes for our enemies as well. So times are changing. Uh, and it's not for the better, right? Yeah. But I'm I'm also seeing that uh, you know, if you step back a second, that you know they they had our people um, in trapped in the Christian religion uh, for for a long, long time, and now in this this point in time, our people start to realise that uh, you know this this white, blonde-haired, blue-eyed JC isn't isn't the one okay but what what they did to counter that now that you know <laughs> lots of our people started leaving the church is they painted jc black yeah. and gave him a hebrew sounding name yeah. and then indoctrinated people into a, a hebrew flavored version of christianity because it, the clever the, the clever the way out of it in this so-called new testament the uh the, his feet was like brass his hair was like lamb's wool so they predicted they're pretty, they're, they're pretty cunning and clever the way how they do things. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, if they fight, they realize, and oh, then they're going to turn to a black JC, but they're still, they're still, uh, they're still, still trapped. Idle. They're still trapped. And, th yeah. and that's the goal is if we can keep them trapped, okay, if they, if they come to the realization of this, okay, we'll keep them trapped either way. Uh, and th this, th these churches are still rather strong. Many of our people are still clinging and cleaving on to that madness. Uh, but but the events that are to unfold is going to cause them to have a change of heart because they're going to call on this thing and realize that this thing is not working. I mean, it has to be. You don't know if the thing is worthwhile or not until it's put to the test. And I'm thinking that great event to put it to the test is what's going to make them say, no, this is incorrect. Uh, and many of them have not dealt with that as of as of yet though they're seeing i mean i think your average black man whether he's israelite or not can see and and is experiencing these disparities and these injustices all over the earth he just we have been taught to be hopeful in time of despair you, you understand yeah. so we're always looking for the silver lining in the clouds, so to speak, when the storm is, is is about to knock the whole house over. And now we're going to start looking at this thing with a with a bit of logic. You know, we've been we we're hopeless romantics, but you know, you can't hey baby, come here. You can't you can't have all of this 
this hope that they've always presented to us. You can always present hope to a hopeless person or a hopeless people. And that's all that they've ever pushed to us is hope, 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 because we're always in a state of hopelessness. We're always in a state of hopelessness, but we're getting smarter. And I think a lot of channels such as this is really opening our people's mind's eye to kind of take a closer look at the Book of Remembrance and see how that lines up with what they're actually seeing versus what they've been told in Christianity that's always bothered them because it's always been in contradiction with what they see. That's it. Okay, we wrap it up. Okay. It's been two yeah, hours. we don't want to cut into Lee's tea time. That's right. Yeah, I'm over here <laughs> doing my grandfather time, but yeah. I had to join with you guys. I was going to go down to my business and do it from down there, but I decided to do it from down here, and my grandson's are quite loud. I do apologize for that. No, but uh, no, so. I have to spend time with these young men. But brothers, peace and y'all. Bless Hank. Peace bless hopefully we can set one up here uh, soon. Yeah. And I don't have to have my grandsons screaming and yelling in the background. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay well, take care, ladies. Okay, to, take care. Peace and y'all. Bless brother Dave. Enjoy your vacation. Our okay. brother Hank, take care. I'll be in touch. Peace okay, and y'all. Bless okay. everyone. Okay, peace and y'all. Bless. Bye. Peace and y'all. Bless. Bless.